Hello and welcome to the Behind Enemy Lines, uh, the podcast video with our continuing Pacific coverage uh, of Battlefront and Flames of War. Uh, with Battlefront. Uh, here I've made an M3 Sherman. Uh, it's not the late variant that it should be. Uh, however, I have used what I have. Uh, I've added some plastic out on the sides and to cover the wheels um, as protection, improvised armour against uh, the Japanese who did tend to like to um, send in suicide bombers, as it were, to um, make a mess. The front is... Uh, what's the front stuff? That's Battlefront's improvised armour set that they have. So by that, it's cool. But the sides are all me and the sandbags are all uh, green stuff. Uh, the tracks are tracker, they come in the accessories pack that you can also buy from Battlefront or if you have Shermans from years ago you'll have like a zillion of these tracks so what I'm going to do is we're going to paint it alright so we'll start off with uh, black because I like black undercoat and see so you can see the wood panel, paneling, veining it looks more woody is what I'm going to say so I'm going to start by using AK Interactive's um, Wargaming ser War Gamer series War Game series um, it's really good. It has a lot less colours on it than, say, um, the big master set, which has like eight of the different greens. I'm starting off with like an olive drab shadow. Uh, this will help me get my base colour down. Uh, this week should also see the release of Greg's uh, Japanese painting video. This is a part one. I'm going to finish this one off in two parts because otherwise it's just too long and got really boring. Um, so I'm going to tear a quick blast. Uh, and this paint tends to uh, not so much chunk up. It doesn't really need thinning, which I, I thought was pretty cool about it because it comes uh, pretty thinned out of the bottle. Normally I have a bit of trouble with the Vallejo type paints, but in this case I didn't, which is really cool. Uh, next one is Olive Drab Base, I guess. Huh? Probably should have done that for all the paints, but I didn't. Alright, I'm doing everything at four times speed because I'm um, doing it one time speed is boring. Alright, so this will brighten it up a bit. Get a bit of um, transition going on. A bit blending maybe. Airbrush is... If everyone's anyway, yeah, bleh, If anyone's ever said that airbrushes are cheating, they're not so much cheating, they're just another tool. And like all your tools, they need to be taken care of because they will jam up. And they will... For every hour spent using an airbrush, you've got to spend at least half an hour cleaning. Depending on how much use, about once a month I do a full breakdown of my airbrush and uh, every now and again I drop in an ultrasonic cleaner because um, it can gunk up. I mean, this airbrush has been out of action uh, sometimes for, if I accidentally leave paint in there, for up to a month. But yeah, it's not cheating, it's just another tool. Alright. So I'm only going to add three colors out of the four color set here, and this one is the Olive Drab Highlight by AK Interactive. So just giving quick highlights here and there. Remember this Sherman's going to be uh, based in the Pacific, so there would be a lot of fading on it because it would be spending most of its time in the sun. Really easy to learn airbrushing. Practice is the key, so... Just don't try to always be moving. Don't concentrate in one spot or you'll get it pulling up and it looks silly. And I, sh I should probably be wearing gloves for this, but, you know, I just love having my hands covered in crap. Right, this one's gonna, this one's gonna be a bit of a pain because as the paints go on, they get less and less thin down the range. That's what I feel anyway. And, uh, it tends to dry on the needle itself and then nothing comes out. So you want to test on my hand, so I need to go away and give it a quick clean. So that's another thing. Um, always keep an eye on your needle. Never bend your needle. Don't use those um, tattoo cleaning brushes to clean your airbrush either. They are not good for it. Uh, if anyone, they look like a good idea, but they knew they're very bad. Uh, so just trying to do it. So I'm doing this at about uh, 10 psi on my regulator. So. 10 to 15 psi is really good for 15 mil. Uh, the brush itself is a 0.2 mil. The brush uh, itself, the brush model is a uh, Badger Sotar 2020. I don't think that model's available, but it does occasionally pop up for sale uh, on Amazon at less than its retail price because it's usually $400. So 
Let's see, here we go. Trying to get it to work, so it did take a bit of cleaning. It's going to take a lot of cleaning by the looks of things. Alright. Going for the proper scrub. There we go. Got it to work. So, trying to give it um, more highlighting on the top areas than you would, say, the underneath. That way, it, it gives a good transition and it's where paint would fade. Paint wouldn't fade so much where it isn't exposed to light, like under the bottom or on the sides as much, but on the very top of the tank, it will, uh, and maybe a bit on the back, it would shine light. And the turret, of course, would have a lot of fading on it. Yeah, and had an issue here with it spitting, that's another problem. That can be the PSI up too high or just uh, the paint is built up on the little protectors there and tends to spit. So I'll get all this done because I'm going to use a, um, a masking technique as soon as I get this done. Alright, here's my favourite thing, Silly Putty. Uh, you can use a product called Panzer Putty. That's apparently a lot better. Silly Putty is great um, because you can chuck it in the freezer once you're done and it self-cleans. Don't ask how, don't know how. It's designed for kids. It's probably toxic. Don't eat it. Uh, Panzer Putty is also great, but this stuff's good. It's only bad in summer because where I am now, it's about a zillion degrees and it tends to get really tacky. Not, uh, not in a tacky, like trying to get bubblegum out of here kind of tacky, so... Um, but still it sticks to itself which is good but it does not pull off paint which is even better so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create camo patterns around the tank um, if you're one of those people who needs to wrap their brains around it cover up majority of it because this is where you want to keep the green so anything covered will keep the green obviously and um, the counter color will be uh, on the exposed areas so silly putty is great to work with I've done some um, hard edge camo before on some Panzer fours, and um, they won awards because they, I, I think they look good, and other people thought they looked good. So there's definitely a way to do it. So the Pacific had uh, so many variations on camouflage and um, what is it? Improvised armor. It was so good. They'd put cages around their hatches because and cages and spikes because Japanese would just open them up and try and you know murder them inside the wooden uh, schutzen to. You know, stop the suicide bombers, all sorts of crap happened. Um, so what I'll do is I'm just going to tidy up the Panzer Putty here. Um, oh, Panzer Putty, this is just silly putty. Uh, to give it, to you know, push it right down the turret so when I spray it doesn't you know creep under and leave bad marks. The um, problem that they had in the Pacific was... Oh, there's no, with, with the air, anti-aircraft 50 cal missing, is it's intentionally left off simply because um, the Japanese would use it against American troops. So in the uh, Flames of War Pacific, you pay an extra five points for anti-aircraft. There's no rule for the Japanese getting on and, of course, using it, um, but it did happen. There's crazy stories of uh, three Stuarts uh, were driving down what happened. So one of them got taken out by a rapid-fire 47 mil. Um, which is really does a really mean Japanese anti-tank gun. The other one was taken out by a suicider uh, with his you know, running with his tank shell. And of course, the last Stuart in the um, line that was left, um, the Japanese soldier went up to it, knocked on the turret, tink tink tink. American opened up, grenade inside, and that was that. He came back. He was the only one that lived, obviously. Um, but yeah, there's crazy stuff like that happen, and of course they get rid of the infantry by just spraying them with a machine gun. So that there is my uh, Panzer Putty. So I'm going to use some Dunkel Grab Brace. Uh, this is part of the other set for the German tanks. So I'll give it a quick spray with that, so we're just getting in all the leftover spaces here. All around. Shouldn't take me too long to do this. Well, not a four times speed anyway. Um, a few seconds to do. Quick clean, quick tap of the old putty to make sure it's stayed in place. This is great stuff. My favorite part about doing this is, of course, the reveal. Once the uh, 
once the putty is removed. I'm not going to call it Panzer Putty because it's not, but if you find Panzer Putty, I suggest using it. It's a really great product. Um, Silly Putty is just simply there because it was cheap. And, you know, I live in New Zealand, so it's really hard to get, you know, any supplies here. All right, so I'm going to use the light base as the next color. So these AK Interactive sets are pretty reasonably priced uh, for five, six paints for about $30. So this here is almost a sand color, which is great because it works as a fantastic counter to the um, to the Sherman's Olive Drab. And of course the turret, can't forget that, very important. And now I'm just using my finger as the uh, stencil because I forgot to put the powder on the end of the turret. Alright, now the removal. You'll see how tacky it is in just a second when I yeah, try and do this. So it's sticking and it's sticking real good and that becomes a pain in the bum. So the best thing to remove putty with is of course putty itself which I find out about now. So there we have it. I don't know what happened to the top of that bit of camo there, but it's definitely not, um, doesn't have the right yellow on it, even though I know I sprayed on it. It's very weird, sometimes it doesn't work. Anyway, we'll get this all off, and we'll come back. I'll try and come back, gosh, messy. Uh, we're gonna make this two parts. So this bit here is done so far, here's the camouflage. Uh, like and subscribe, get ready for part two, and join us uh, with more adventures in uh, the Pacific. Yeah, thanks for watching, bye.